Welcome to Handsworth New Testament Church of God here in Birmingham in the UK. My name is Jacinth and on behalf of the leadership team, I want to welcome all of you to today's service. Wherever you are watching from, wherever you are listening from, you are most welcome and we are so blessed to have you. Our prayer today is that each and every one of you is blessed, is truly blessed. And that may be through our worship ministry, through the scripture, through the word of God. We pray that you receive a word, you receive a message, that it speaks to you where you are right now, and that it speaks into your situation. And so we also pray that it goes with you, the word goes with you for the whole week. And so without further ado, join us in worship ministry. Endure it forever. Oh, Lord. People from every nation and tongue, 
Sovereign God, our Father, our Lord and our King, we thank you today for your goodness, your mercy and your grace. Thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, and for the life that we live in him. Thank you that in him we live and move and have our being. Thank you that in him we have all things pertaining to life and godliness. We honor your holy name today, Lord. For who you are you are great and greatly to be praised father we want to thank you today that we can come into your presence and that as we come into your presence we find freedom we find liberty we want to thank you this morning for the freedom that we have in jesus christ your word says that whoever the sun sets free is free indeed hallelujah to your name lord as we come this morning we want to lift our brethren and our friends and our community and our nation to you. So many among us, Lord God, are sick, sick in body, sick in mind. We ask, Lord God, that according to your word, healing the virtues would uh, enter into the places where they are, enter into their bodies even now. Your word says that by your stripes we are healed and, and we do claim our healing this morning, Father. We pray for those who are bereaved, those who are, have lost loved ones. Uh, God, my Father, you know the heartache and the pain that they feel at this moment, but you are the comforter. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you comfort those who, who mourn. You comfort those who suffer loss. And we pray this morning that wherever uh, your children are this morning who have suffered loss, that they would feel the comfort and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, for families this morning. We pray for marriages. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be in our homes and that you would bind us together with love cords that cannot be broken. You see the issues that we have dealing with, Lord God. You see that some of these issues are beyond us. Ah, uh, God, but you are able, you are able, you are well able. And this morning, we want to thank you for your ability as you step into our homes and into our families, as you give us relief, as you give us peace, uh, as you provide for us, as you give us strength. Uh, Lord God, as your presence just warms our homes and warms our hearts this morning, we want to say thanks. We lift our government to you, Lord God. We lift the nations to you. Ask, Lord, that your wisdom, Lord God, would be available to them and that they would tap into it. Uh, God, that as we uh, go through these circumstances in these dark days, Lord God, that you would give the answer. Thank you, Father, this morning for the hope that we have in you. We have hope for tomorrow. We have hope for the future. We can look to you, God. Hallelujah. And our hearts will be warm. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. For answering them also 
because we tell you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. We say Amen to the reading of God's word. Brothers and sisters, it's offering time. Yes, I just heard five or six of you say it's blessing time. I'm going to give the rest of you a chance to catch up now. So when I say offering time, you say it's blessing time. Ready? It's offering time. Yes, it is indeed blessing time. And we are so grateful to God for his faithfulness to us, his continued faithfulness. And we, we also want to take the opportunity as we tell him thanks to also extend our gratitude to you. Uh, and for the consistent manner in which you have, you know, continued to give to this ministry, to give to this church. Thank you. Thank you for your sacrifices. You know, thank you for uh, your gifts, your love offerings, you know, the gifts that you've given to this organization. We really, really appreciate it. You know, and the Bible says that, you know, God himself, uh, he loved us so much that he gave the best that he had, which is his son, Jesus Christ. And with Jesus Christ, he continues to give unto us daily. You know, and, and we want to emulate our father. You know, we want to be like him. And so as part of his body, you know, we want to give to the cause. We want to give not because uh, we are weighed down to do this. Not because somebody has said we should give. Not because we feel under pressure. Because we actually, but rather because we actually take pleasure in giving to God. We take pleasure in giving to the cause of Christ. So this morning, whatever you have purposed into your, you know, purposed in your heart to give, do so and do so willingly, do so joyfully. Uh, you know, the information uh, to give will appear on your screen. Uh, you know, you will be guided. Uh, you know, you just follow the instructions that you see uh, on your screen. And, and I can tell you this, Whatever you have to give, whatever it is, God appreciates it, and so do we. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us your best, Jesus Christ, your Son. Thank you that with him you freely give us all other things. Your Bible, the Bible says, your word says that when we seek the kingdom, all other things are added unto us. Lord, we are kingdom minded this morning. Hallelujah. Our giving is kingdom minded. Our gifts are kingdom gifts this morning. And so whatever your children have purposed in their hearts to give today, Lord, we pray that like you took those loaves and those fish and blessed them and multiplied them so that 5,000 strong were fed and there were fragments picked up after. That even so, whatever is given this morning, you are able to take it and bless it, Lord, and, and cause it to be multiplied and to go forth and do whatever you want it to do. Breathe on these gifts, Lord. Breathe on these tithes. Breathe on the offering in the name of Jesus Christ. And that for those who willingly and joyfully continue to give unto the cause, Lord, that their store baskets would never be empty. That as they give, bills are covered. That as they give, school fees are paid. That as they give, immigration fees are paid and lawyer fees are paid. And, and as they give, whatever other need they have, Father, those needs will be met in the name of Jesus Christ because you are faithful to your promises. Everything that you said you do, you do it, God. 
So we look to you this morning, Lord, and we tell you thanks for the gifts that are coming into the storehouse this morning and for the blessings that you are returning as your children bring whatever they have into your house. We tell you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
It gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Reverend Marvely McLean, who is going to speak to us today on the subject of a house no storm can destroy. I just want to take this opportunity this morning to just bless the Lord, to be with you in his house one more time, to worship our Lord, the King of King and the Lord of Lord. What a joy it is for us to be in his presence. And as we come this morning to worship, I'd just love to share a word with you this morning. And I pray it will be a blessing to your life. My, the topic of my message is a house no storm can destroy. I believe that when we all went into 2020, we went in with great expectation. We thought it would be a year of exciting discovery. According to the Bible, 20 is a symbol of redemption as well as a symbol of completion and perfection. When we think of 20, it speaks of vision and clarity. But how soon as we step into the year, things have changed. We came up against the coronavirus. We did not know that we would face a severe storm. We did not know that so early in the year that a storm would be heading our way. Jesus told a story concerning two men, one who built his house on sun, while the other chose to build on the rock. A fierce storm blew up, says Jesus, and the house built on the sun fell apart, whereas the house built on the rock stand firm. I wonder why Jesus would have used such a simple example that even a child could understand to get his point over. Everyone knows that sun is shifting. It has no substance unless it is bind with something that can hold it together. It is the truth of God's word that holds us together. The songwriter said, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. If we want to build a secure place for our inner life that will stand any storm, then we must pay attention to the foundation. This remarkable illustration is telling us that Every one of us is attempting to build a place of refuge from the storm of life. And if we want to build a secure place for our inner life, then we must pay attention to the foundation. For surely, my brethren and friends, storm will come. We have seen the force of this storm on many lives. Many have faced bereavement, redundancy, serious sicknesses, financial failure, marriage breakup, and something similar. Some of us have come through this coronavirus safely, and we give God thanks that we are here today and we praise his name. But even if no clouds are on the horizon of your life, don't be deceived. Fasten your seatbelt, because at some time, a storm is going to head your way. One thing is sure, that in this life, we will face storm. Storm will come in our lives, and sometimes they can be very unpleasant. But we have a God in whom we put our trust, and we know that our God is able. So whether we face only a few light winds or days of tempest, 
storm will arise in our life. And I'm not being pessimistic here, brethren and friends, when I say storm will come. Life is full of uncertainties. Often when we think all is well, suddenly the heavens may be overcast and a storm break. In a moment, health, friends, comfort may be gone. Because Job told us in Job chapter 5 and verse 7, Yet man is born to trouble as the spark flies upward. This is why we will do well to spend a little time boring deep to see whether the foundation of our lives is built on shifting sand or solid rock. How beneficial it would be if we possess something that the tempest cannot reach. How do we do that? By taking instruction given by Jesus in the story. The secret of having a firm foundation for life, a foundation which no storm can shift, is to hear and heed the word of God. The teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talked to us about many things, from Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 7. Jesus was telling his followers to take heed to what he was saying. And he called them, salt and light. He told them that they should control their thoughts. They should fulfill the law. They should avoid anger. They should give to the needy. They should make time to pray. They should stop worrying and so on. Jesus began to encourage his followers and those who were listening to him that day. But when we go back to the very first word which Jesus uttered that formed the preface of his Sermon on the Mount, our Lord gave us eight wonderful statements called the Beatitude. And if we can grasp the meaning that is behind these simple, profound statements of Jesus and apply them day by day to our lives, you will build a foundation for your life which is solid as a rock. Hear what Jesus said in these words. He said, blessed is the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which persecute you for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Jesus pronounced blessing on every one of these statements so that the person who apply them to his or her life will experience an inner satisfaction and sufficiency that did not depend on outward circumstances. The people of Jesus' day that he was speaking to, they could not understand what Jesus was saying because their circumstances at the time was difficult, but Jesus was giving them a word of comfort that would satisfy their inner life, that would give them the strength to go through whatever the situation is. Because God promised that he will be with us. There's no storm that rage in our lives that God is not in control of. 
when he told his disciples to get into the boat and cross over on the other side, they did not know that a storm would arise that would want to destroy them. But Jesus was at hand. The Bible said they saw him coming. They even thought it was a ghost. But Jesus called to them in the midst of their storm. And he, he speak peace into their situation. And they were comforted. They were delivered. They were not destroyed. Brethren, no st storm can destroy us because we put our trust and our confidence in God. Jesus is describing in the beatitude, the characteristics of the ideal follower of Christ and the blessing he or she receive both here and earth and in heaven. The blessed person find delight in the word of God and the God of the word and allow it to be the instruction of his life. In Psalms 1 and verse 2, the psalmist said, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. The blessed person is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalms 1 and verse 3. The blessed person delight in the teaching and instruction found in the scripture. For within it, within the word of God, reside the promises of God, the mercies of God, the protection of God, the peace of God, the grace of God, and what joy these great truths bring to the people of God when we are going through the storms of life, when we're going through situations that overwhelm overwhelms us when we do not know which way to turn but when we turn to Jesus when we take him at his word his word is sufficient to heal to give us consolation to give us protection to guide us in our storm until we reach our oh, victory on the other side Jesus explanation in the sermon Jesus' explanation in this sermon that truly the blessed life comes from not getting or from doing, but from being. It is from being. The emphasis here is on the God-like character. If we can build our life on the truth of God's word, God promised in his word that he will take us safely through. The attitude and character we need to have to build a sure foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation we build our life upon. And he also, the Bible said, is the chief cornerstone that binds everything together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11, Paul said, For no other foundation can anyone lay by that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. There is only one foundation that is required for a building. And once it is laid, it never needs to be repeated. When Paul came to Corinth, he was determined to preach Jesus Christ and him crucify. He laid the only foundation that would last. The foundation is laid by the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we receive Jesus Christ in our life, that is the foundation that we build upon. The foundation 
is the most important part of a building because it determines the size, the shape, and the strength, and the structure of that building. So when Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12 to, to, to 13, and he gave us here some types of material that we need to use if we are going to build a life against the storm, he told us in his word, he said, now anyone build on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one work, so of what sort it is. If anyone works which he has built on, endure, he will receive a reward. And if anyone work is burned up or destroyed, he will suffer loss. Remember, brethren, we are building for eternity. So what we build into our life is of utmost importance for this life will come up, as I said, against storm. And what we build in our life now, and if it survives, it will carry us into eternity. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs tells us about the wise man and the treasure that is found in God's word, if we sought it, it will protect us. And if we invest it in our daily lives, it will give us the hope and the strength that we need as we go through the storm of life. Consider one of these from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 15. He said, happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof of gold. She is more precious than ruby. So if we find the wisdom that we need to build our life in God's word, the Bible is telling us here that we are a wise man. We are to build into our lives that which is pure, valuable, and beautiful. For we can find no better or sure foundation for our lives than the truth contained in the word of God. You may tell yourself, my life seems okay at the moment. Why do I need to invite God probing when everything is going fine? If that is the case, then consider this. The best time to find out if your house is built on firm foundation is not during a storm. Right now, as you are listening to me, God is saying, check your foundation. Or you're building on sand? Are you building with wood? Are you building with hay? Or are you building with straw? If we build with those material, we will suffer loss. If we build our life on the foundation of God's word, if we believe what God is saying to us, and that his word is the sure foundation of our lives, then we know, brethren, all will be well. I give God thanks for you this morning that you are building a life. And I pray that your life will build upon the word of God. It is not position. It is not gaining a lot in this life, as important as those may be. 
And when Jesus speaks these beatitudes in the life of people, Jesus was not saying that poverty, persecution, and hunger and tears are blessing in themselves. If that was the case, he would never have done all that he did to alleviate the suffering of others. What Jesus was describing in the beatitude is that inner attitude that we are to have, and those inner attitudes are the blessings that we will live by. So that when we go through the storm of life, we will not be destroyed. Our house will not fall apart because it's built on the foundation of God's word. And upon that foundation, we are safe from the floods of life. You see, we are going through life, brethren, whether you're a Christian or whether you're a non-Christian, storm will come in our lives. The Bible said, the rain fall, the wind blow, and the flood came, and it beat upon these houses. It beat upon the one who built his house on the rock, and it beats upon the one who built his house on the sand. But the one who built his house on the rock, because he built it on Jesus Christ, who is the sure foundation, his house abide safe because it was founded upon Jesus. Where are you building your life today? What are you using to build your life today? Jesus is saying, do not build it on the things of this world because the things of this world is like shifting sand. When the wind comes and when the wave comes, Gradually, it will move the foundation and the foundation will fall. God wants to know that you can build your life upon him. And in building your life upon him, you will have that safety, you will have that security, not only in this life, but in the life to come. May God bless you today. Praise the Lord. I'd just love to pray for you today and to tell you that Jesus loves you and he cares about you. And some right now may be going through storms in their lives. Situation may be out of your control. And you are thinking, how can I make it through? The word of God is encouraging your heart today. If you trust in him, there is hope. Oh, one writer said, there's life for a look at the crucified one. There's life at this moment for you. God offers hope. He sent out a lifeline to rescue you from the storm of life. Will you accept him to be your savior and Lord today? He's waiting. All he wants to do is for you to let him in. And if you let him, him in, he will come and he will abide with you forever. And he will make a change in your life and in your circumstances. God bless you. Father, we give you thanks today, Lord, for those who are hearing your word. And whatever storm they may be caught into, Lord God, help them to know that you are their hope. You came, Lord God, to rescue. You came to save. You came, Lord God, to save from the uttermost, those who come to God by you, seeing you have a live it today to make it intercession for your people. So I commit them to you today. I commit them, Lord God, to your saving love. I commit them to your saving power. I commit them to your saving grace because you are able to do, Lord God, what you promise that you'll do for those who call upon you and those who put their trust in you. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
We thank God for his word. We thank him for his servant, uh, Reverend McLean, and for the timely word which he has ministered unto our hearts. Uh, truly, if our houses are built upon the rock, the solid foundation of Christ, the rock, and whatever storm comes, it will stand. Glory to God. Let us uh, pray at this time. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word brings comfort to our hearts. It brings strength. It gives us direction. Your word is right and all your works are done in truth and we can take confidence from your word. Thank you for your servant uh, this morning who you have used so ably to share a word in season. I pray God that this word would go forth and do exactly what you desired for it to do because you said your word will not return unto you void. Uh, but it will go forth and it will do what you want it to do. So thank you for the many hearts that have been touched this morning. The hearts that have been built up. The hearts that have been encouraged. The hearts, hallelujah, who have made a decision uh, to build upon the rock of Jesus Christ. The hearts who are, who are tired of sand castles. The hearts who are tired of, of building by the beach. Hallelujah. But hearts who are now ready to build upon the rock ready to build upon that firm foundation. Thank you, God, for giving them that push this morning. Holy Spirit, thank you for the word just nestling into their hearts today. Hallelujah. And giving them courage. Hallelujah. Building them up, bolstering their foundation today, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you for your daughter and for the way you have used her. We, pr we pray, God, that you would strengthen her and replenish her that which she has used up and given of herself, God, we pray that you would return even a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful word which has gone forth over these airwaves, which have touched the hearts of many all over this nation and all over this world. Men and women and children are hearing today that if their houses, if their lives are built upon Jesus Christ, the solid rock, then regardless of the storms of life that come, they will stand. Oh, when marriages break up, they will stand. Oh, when children go into jail, they will stand. Oh, when we lose loved ones, ah, oh, we will stand. When difficulty arise, we will stand. Whatever the storms of life come. Because our lives are built upon Jesus Christ, the solid rock, we will stand. Thank you for this word today, Lord. Thank you for your servant again. We ask these other mercies. These are other mercies we ask rather in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Reverend McLean, for that truly inspiring word. And we pray that each and every one of you was touched and has something to carry them through that week. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, please follow us on our social media platforms. And remember, we are still in a season of COVID. Don't forget your face coverings.